praise and honor and glory. Now, God, as we move into our service on today, God, we continue to lift up those, Lord God, that are still struggling, Lord God, that are still in the hospital, Lord God, that, that need your healing touch. Those who are lost, love them, Lord God. We lift them up. We ask God right now that you comfort them. Bless them, Lord God. Let them know, God, that you are still near their side. No matter what, God, heal their hearts. Lift every burden, Lord God, that's weighed down on their shoulders, God. Let them know that they can and they shall cast their cares upon the help the Father. We thank you, God, that in this day, Lord God, we will become greater faith walkers, God. That we will, Lord God, walk by faith and not live, Lord God, in the things that we see here upon earth, Lord God. That we will use that faith, God, to move mountains. We will use that faith, Lord God, to uplift your holy name. We will use that faith, Lord God, to live, Lord God, upon this earth. So, Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, we worship and we adore you, God. There's so much going on, Lord God, when our hearts have been heavy, Lord God. But we are going to trust you, God, through all of this, God. We're going to depend on you, God, through all of this, God. We're going to continue, Lord God, to be faithful to you, God, regardless of God of what we feel or what we may think, God. We have nothing else, Lord God, but you. 
and we welcome you with our whole heart to our family online. Man, I miss you guys, and I'm strategizing. I gotta get y'all together. I, if we gotta do it on Zoom and we look like a checkerboard, I don't care. I need us to get together and, 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 and socialize. I don't know how to do that. We can, we can get Sister Boom to send everybody a meal. How about that? Get a meal to everybody. We sit down there and watch each other eat or something. Hallelujah. I just, I, I'm longing for my flock. I'm longing for my people. And thank God for you that are here. Uh, bless the Spirit of the Lord for the consistency with which you come and, and, and impart. Those of you who are at home, you cool, you good. You good. Y'all can, y'all can bitch them out, though, periodically if you want to. We can sit in our mask, socially distance. There's a lot of room yeah. in this church. Yeah. And we can sit together and just come in and you feel the need to get your worship on in person, like I do. See, I, being around people uh, fuels me. It, 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 it drives me. I, I can sit home and worship with Tasha Cobb all day long. That's how I can sit, but it just does me better. It makes my heart go pit a pat. I'm able to sit in the presence of my people Amen. And, and, and bless the Lord. Yeah. Uh, oh, my soul, all of that oh, is within me. So I'm going yeah. yeah. to worship some more. I want to lift up some people so you can plant their hearts in there. Yeah. Your situations in your mind. As we just continue to worship a little bit. Yes, yes. Yes. Keep Janice, yes, Elder Janice, yes, yes. her family in your hearts. Yes, Amen. Yes, um, we love us some Janice. Yes, and we love Aunt Sonia, Rhonda, Terrence, and Libby. So keep the whole family lifted up. As, uh, and Sonia and Terrence and Rhonda celebrated the home going of their father. I think it was Wednesday of this week. Y'all continue to pray for them. Continue to lift them up. Continue to reach out and just give them some encouragement. Mother Dolly's granddaughter, keep her lifted up. Our, our own Cammy Jo, who's home and her recovery. And you can you can you can sing her online. You can hit her on a text and she gonna hit you right back. She can be in the middle of singing or whatever. She gonna text you right back. Keep Cammy lifted up. Tony, our own Tony Norris, y'all. She's still recovering. Continue to pray to God's strength of her and Jonathan. Uh, Ayana's dad is in the hospital. Keep her lifted up as well. Uh, Diana is home but recovering. Uh, from the heart surgery, uh, from the situation that she's been dealing with. We lift up you, Diana. Um, Veronica, last night lost an uncle, sister Veronica, lost her father's brother last night. He, her, uh, lived in the McCray family, Veronica and Mike. Yes. And keep Uncle Mike in your prayers. Yes. Now continue to deal with his, his health. Michelle and Michael lost a sister this week. Uh, it's been a lot of death. Keep, keep. Michelle uh, Law lifted up uh, in your hearing. Sister Dorothy is here in her recovery, please. And continue to lift her up. And uh, uh, Pastor Mike Franklin uh, family is, 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 is still in crisis in health challenges. Keep them lifted. Uh, can we worship a little bit? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many love you guys? God still love you even in the midst of what you're going through. Amen. Yeah. i 
in my life, in my family's life, who is in need of your prayer. And that is my baby sister-in-law, Mel Ann. Keep Mel Ann up there now. Tugs on my heart. She's in, she's in my seat. To say what I'm feeling. Come on, bitch. And I don't have words to write you a song. But I have this hope and I have this prayer. And I am.
anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving in your heart. Let your requests be known to God. That's all I want to say. I want to talk this morning around the topic. Regaining control. It seems that disease and, 
and, and, and mayhem and, and, and circumstances impact my people in a much darker and sinister way than it does anybody else. And, 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 and so I need you to know that I hear you and I understand that, that we go through a, a lot more than, 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 than other people, but I also need to remind you that you not only go through it, you come out better. That's right. That's right. I just dare I remind you that you ain't built to break. Do I need to tell you once again that God got your back and, and that not a devil in hell can come against you because you are the blessed of God? Yes, you, you have disease, but many are the afflictions of the righteous. But God delivers them out of all of them.
can't pay me to say it. Ouch. <laughs> it ain't pretty. But often it seems like things get out of control, out of control in our lives, don't they? See, see, from time to time we find ourselves in the middle of a crisis. Yes. Yes, Sometimes those crises of, of our own making, Amen. but yes. that nevertheless make them any more effective right. Right. in creating panic in our lives. And at, at least we we might think it's a crisis. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, and you can only react to what you believe about a situation. Yeah. Yeah. If you look at a situation and you say, this is a crisis, then you're going to act like it's a crisis. That's right. Whatever it is that happens, we like to think that we have no control on it. Mm -hmm. And we, if we look at our country, hey, folks, listen. It's not China's fault that, that, that people all over the world have contracted the coronavirus. That's right. That's right. And, and, and even if it was their fault, what does it profit us to keep blaming them? Right. What can we what can we do about it? Right. None. Right. But by the way, contrary to some people's view that the coronavirus is it's not even President Trump's uh, fault. It's not I tell President Trump. It's not. I tell President Trump. Thank you, Nathan. It's not the House of Representatives' fault. It's not the Senate's fault. It ain't Nancy Pelosi's fault. But by the way, some of uh, uh, some of you uh, might, might 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 know that that God has been moving in our lives in spite of what has been going on in our lives, uh, and, and 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 His truth still is marching on. We have had to readjust how we have the God encounter mm -hmm. because of what's going on. But Lord knows we we doing okay. Yeah, yeah. When you put your finger on the pulse of the church, particularly here at Exusia Lighthouse International Christian Ministries, you will find that we are alive and well, yeah. and we kick it. Yeah. We still kick it. We we still making it happen. We're still pressing our way in. We're still doing the work to which God has called our hearts and our hands to do. And so the situation is affecting our country. It's affecting e each other. We can't control what, what, what folks in our neighborhood uh, are doing. Uh, do, 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 do you get next door things in, 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 uh, in your neighborhood? Do you do you look out for each other? Do you do, do you check on each other just to make sure things are okay with your neighbors? And you know, you may not have ever spoken to them before in your life, but now would be a good time for you to break the mold and reach out to somebody where you are in your own neighborhood and start ministry there. You want to do something, be about it. Go ahead and do it. And so it's amazing. Um, how, how when you look at social media, it looks like it looks like things are horrible. Yeah, it does. Uh, how how people are treating each other. Yes, Lord. How these parents just keep popping up out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they, they just blow up in your face. And I was watching. Uh, I was telling my wife, I'm like, uh, there was this this, this, this man and. Home Depot, maybe Walmart, didn't wear a mask and the clerk was saying, sir, you have to have a mask on. And he went to throw and miss. He went to turning over stuff and fighting. And, 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 and just because somebody want them to be safe. We're not. Not being mean, it's just that we gotta work corporately. Yes. 
to work on this. Don't you want your life to return to normal? Yeah. Aren't you sick and tired of wearing these masks yourself? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't want to minimize what has been happening in the, the police arena, but you know what? I can't hardly breathe <laughs> with those masks on. Yet yeah, I understand it, and I need to wear it because I have you in my life, and I, the last thing any self-respecting pastor wants is to infect people they love with the virus that, that has the potential to kill them. So people are destroying things. I think people should be held responsible for their actions. Amen. Amen. But the truth of the matter is, y'all, we can't control nobody. But all sins. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. So if you feel that things are out of control, they are. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anyone in here who knows anything about criticism? Amen. Is parents? Yeah. Is preachers? Amen. And is politicians? Yeah. And it's not necessarily in that order. People are so quick to criticize everything that we do, every decision that we make, every direction that we go in. And, 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 and I, I want to ask you something. Have you ever asked anyone how they're doing and they respond, respond to you, I'm doing okay uh, 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 under the circumstances? Right. Yeah. Right. I just want to say, but, but what are you doing? Under that. <laughs> Why you gotta exist under your circumstances? Why can't you come up a little higher? Why can't you put your circumstances under your feet? What is the matter of fear that is within you that causes you to wear your circumstances like they're a warm, cozy blanket? Yeah, from under your circumstances. If you want to change your circumstances, the external conditions of the world, they keep us from being contestants in this walk of life. And I came to tell you that you must be present to win. Yes. Proverbs 23 and 7 says, but as he thinks in his heart, so is he. How many of you like me are guilty of stinking thinking? Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, we think bad thoughts about yes. ourselves when we are the subject matter of our thoughts. Uh -huh. That's why we got to be in communication with one another because we can start telling ourselves a lie about ourselves and start, start believing. believing. Yeah. 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 We yeah. start thinking that the yeah. prophecies that the people have said, the yeah. mean spirited remarks folks have yeah. put into our yeah. spirits about you, you're not worthy, you're, you're inadequate, you're not significant, you're ugly, you're black, whatever. That can start speaking back to us out of the fullness of our own spirit. Yes. It's time for us to recognize when our thoughts are not serving us well yes. and cut them off. Amen. Bishop, I can't stop thinking sometimes. It just will come like rapid fire. Well, start singing because it's hard to yes. think of your know, stinking thoughts when you're singing praises to the Lord. Amen. Shut up your mouth. I mean, uh, your conversation with yourself, when your self-talk is not building you up, but suppressing you down, get in a place of worship. Get in a place of praise and, and let the Lord minister yes. to you. We can get uh, to thinking. We can start thinking that we're smarter. We're classier. Yes. We're sharper than anybody else around us. Yeah. Yeah. Let me remind you, y'all, uh, that the word of the Lord tells us in Galatians 6 and 3, for if anyone thinks himself to be something, <laughs> when he is nothing, right. he deceives himself. Yeah, I, I want to say that again so you really understand it. When you think yourself is something when you really ain't, uh -oh. you ain't doing nothing but fooling yourself. Uh -oh. yeah. See, I, I 
need to hear myself understand that. I need to let that ruminate in my spirit because I find myself oftentimes responding to people who mm, who ain't the best. And, 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 and I'm like, you know what? I got to remember in this dynamic, in this exchange, it's you that's the dime and I am the dollar. I'm not thinking myself more highly than I all. I'm just telling you that there are situations and circumstances that goes on in your life and you find yourself punching downward. You ain't got to fight nobody that you know is under your feet. There's some situations you can walk away from. And so a carrot comes barking up in your face at Walmart and challenging you because her husband took her out and taught her how to shoot a gun, you can walk away from Karen. You can, you can, let me see, I've seen several of them be completely and totally disarmed when the person they're challenging is, in fact, a child of God. And they're saying, bless you. We, I forgive you, ma'am. I, I, I pray over you, ma'am. One woman was cussing out this, this yard uh, lawn crew landscapers. So ugly. And the landscaper began to say, ma'am, I forgive you. I love you, ma'am. She says, cousin away. She said, and God loves you too. And she stopped dead in her tracks. You know, she stopped dead in her tracks because she remembers she actually went to church herself. You see what I'm saying? They have forgotten that they do go to church because yeah. see their church and pastors are supporting the insanity that is yeah. now yeah. this world. Yeah. And they're they're behind it. I got a book. I wanna I wanna push it out there. I'm reading this book. It's called Unholy. Yeah. How the uh, uh, evangelical movement of Donald Trump has co-opted the Christian church. Yeah. It's written by this lady named Susan Posner. It's a powerful read. You need to get this book. I'm going to teach on this book. I'm going to, uh, uh, because she does a very factual breakdown of how it all happened behind the scenes. It was deliberate. It was intentional. And and the Christian uh, evangelical, evangelical Christian community got behind Donald Trump because they knew they would get their policies through by Donald Trump. Not because he's a Christian, they knew that. They knew he didn't love the Lord. But you need to understand that that when for anyone thinks himself more highly than they are, he ain't gonna trigger himself. So we have to watch our temper. Yeah. We have to watch how we think yes, yes. and how we react. Second uh, Timothy three and one says. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. I'm talking to you. But men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters and proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control. They will be brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, high-minded and haughty. There will be lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Verse 5 said they will have a form of godliness, but will be denying the power thereof. And for such people, this is what the word of the Lord says, I will turn them away. Yes. yes. While you, <clears throat> while you are focusing on the sin of someone that you think you are better than, that you are walking more soundly in the things of God than they are. Let me go back over this list. <laughs> Men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money. Boasters, proud, blasphemers. They will be disobedient to their parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiveness, slanderous, without self-control. They will be brutal, despisers of good, 
traitors, headstrong, high-minded and haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, and having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, and for such people, turn away. Galatians 5 and 22 breaks it down even further. He says, it says, for the fruit of the Spirit, watch this, this is who we are, the fruit of the Spirit, is love and joy and peace and long-suffering. Now, I know these are hard. It gets deeper. And, 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 and faithfulness and goodness and gentleness and self-control. And against such, there's no law. And those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. And y'all don't want me to repeat that, do you? I'll just say, those who love Christ have managed to also crucify their own flesh. And it's passion and it's desires. Because often, y'all, the combination of our thoughts and our tempers, and they can lead our tongues to say things that we shouldn't say. I know y'all walk with Jesus in the cool of the morning, and you say all the holy things, and you don't ever cuss like I do. You, you, you are, you're good with God. Y'all are straight. But I, I have to stand in this spot and confess that there are times when this lyrical voice of mine don't say things that are building up, but are tearing down. There's oftentimes the, the thoughts that we think comes tumbling out of the mouth because the word of the Lord says, out of the fullness of the heart does the mouth speak. And so how many of you have ever put your foot in your mouth? Yeah, I remember. You know, we just don't say things right. We are angry or we are enraged or uh, we are self-righteous. We're stuck in our own right, rightfulness. And, and we say things that we should not say, things that cannot be received. Amen. I had someone say to me, uh, I have to watch my tongue when I'm talking to my husband because I find myself lecturing him. I said, one way to ensure that your husband don't hear a word you say is to start your saying by you need. Amen. The moment you, helpmate, tell your husband you need. The rest that follows that statement, that phrase, sounds just like Tyler Brown's mom. <laughs> He didn't hear nothing else. And you, and you have this great propensity for saying you need because you are hardwired to help him. Right, right. You are built to help. Yes. And you feel the need to say you need. I'm not talking to Dr. Mickey. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, tell the truth. I'm just saying. Whenever you find you know, you're lecturing him, yes. he can't hear you. Even though he knows he needs your help to navigate your life. Yes. You can't lord your help over him. Amen. You're right. You're right. You can't lord it over him. Amen. You gotta come through a different tact. Your your you need conversation need to be pillow talk. I'm trying to help you. Amen. You can get me to do anything. Y'all ain't growing up. Come on, teach. I remember watching the uh, Democratic National Convention, I think it was like in 2002, and my dad. Uh, Governor Ann Richard, a shiverhead warrior from Tech, the great state of Texas, was uh, doing a keynote speaking at the Democratic National Convention. And she was talking about her adversary. Uh, yeah. George Bush, George Herbert Walker Bush, the younger. And he was running for president at the time. 
And I will never forget her words. She was a southern charm. She was a, 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 a one of those genteel ladies who knew how to cuss you out without ever saying a cuss word. And, and, and she was talking about George Bush. And she said, poor George. He can't help himself. Because he was born with a silver foot in his mouth. <laughs> Don't laugh too hard, because some of us have been born with a silver foot in our mouths. Uh, I remember reading this story about a preacher who was riding with, uh, in a van with several other preachers a few years ago. And, 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 and you know how a lot of preachers like to talk and laugh and have a good time? Well, that's, that's what uh, was going on in this van. And, 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 and this one preacher spoke to the guy next to him. And he says, hey, have you seen uh, Brother So-and-so lately? And, 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 and he went on to say, uh, talking about the brother, uh, uh, he, he's got this new hair. he got this new hair. At least uh, it, it'll be his in, in, in three or four more payments. <laughs> and he just cracked up at his own joke. Only to realize that the preacher with whom he was sharing this information was wearing a toupee. He was wearing the same hat. And that preacher reports that he felt like a little piece of matter in a great big laboratory. Someone said, it is better to be silent and to be thought of as a fool than to open your mouth and remove all that. <laughs> Some of us talk too much. Uh, several people have attributed that, 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 that thought to uh, Abraham Lincoln. Some said it was Mark Twain uh, that, 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 that gave us that. But, uh, the, the point is real. Yeah. Is that we need to learn to control our tongue. If we learn to control our tongues and not say everything that we think we need to say. Right, right, right. If you just took a deep breath and breathed just a little bit before you open up your mouth. Amen. And, I'm, and no, I'm not forgetting uh, what the Lord's brother, James, wrote. When it says that no man can tame the tongue. Right. However, I think this verse in Proverbs Help us to understand this point. Proverbs 7 and 27. It says, even a fool is counted wise when he knows how to hold his peace. <laughs> even a fool can uh, come across as a wise man when he ain't saying too much. Yes. Uh, and because when he shuts his lips, he is considered perceptive. Yeah, he's considered we need to control our turmoil. Therefore, my anxious, be anxious uh, uh, thoughts make me answer uh, because of the turmoil that is within me. Yeah. Job 30 and 27 said, My heart is in turmoil, and it cannot rest days of affliction and confront me. Psalm 38 and 8 says, I feel feeble and severely broken. I groan because of the turmoil of my spirit. We need to control our terror. Psalm 27 and 3 says, Though uh, an army may encamp itself around me, my heart shall not fear. Amen. Though war may rise against me, in this I will be confident. Psalm 56 and 4 says, In God I will praise his word. And in God I will put my trust. I will not fear. Amen. Well, what, what can flesh do to me? He says, I will not fear. Because I am spirit. What can flesh do to me? The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can a man do to me? Bishop, you need to stop preaching about 
the current events and social justice, because you know they can come at you. Shh. How can you be on the vanguard of advocating for the least of God's children right, right. and not speak to the systemic racism that impact their lives? You, we need to understand that our mantle is not to have a club meeting for our own Sunday. Come on, come on. <clears throat> yes. Absolutely. Ephesians 5 and 16 says, redeeming the time because the days are evil. I love watching them reclaim their time when they're having discussions on Capitol Hill. And, and, and how they have to just, just disclaim back their time. But listen, God wants you to reclaim your time. And, and, and Romans 13 and 11 says, and, to do, and do this, knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of our sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. I'm not one of those apocalyptic end time preachers. I don't want to sit, stand up in the pulpit every Sunday and declare to you that the Lord is coming back. We already know that. But here's the thing that we don't know. And so no matter of preaching about it, it's going to help you know it. It's you don't know when. So ain't no point in coming to church yelling at folks any, any day now that the Lord is coming back soon because soon still might be another 10,000 years from now. Because a day is like a twinkling in the eye. It's only a, a, a twinkle in God's eye. You need to understand that Romans 13 tells us, and we do this knowing uh, the time, that now is high time to awake out of our sleep. Now, that's the real deal. Yeah, yeah. The, the young people have this, this saying about being woke. I'm woke. Yeah. I got it. I'm, I'm aware. I understood. When the real deal is, you still are uh, trying to discern a conspiracy theory from the truth. Uh -huh. yeah. If you woke, you wouldn't even be dealing with the conspiracy theory. If you walk, you'll get in the truth because the truth has been given to us 2,000 years ago. We know the truth. Pick up your Bible, open it up, and read it. Get off YouTube. Get out of YouTube University. Quit looking at these conspiracies and walk in the truth. What is the truth? I am the way. I am the way. The truth and the life. Where your treasure is, there your heart is also. Y'all need to know that. Yes. Come on. The things that we can control. As believers, with this one caveat, we can only control those things that we can control when we have the power of the Holy Ghost active in our lives. Amen. Touch your neighbor and say, you ain't running nothing. You ain't running nothing. You just think you. <laughs> as much as I talk, Y'all need to understand that the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. Yes. Amen. That's the word. And that's the truth. Yes. Like the rivers of water, he turns it whenever he wishes. Yes. Hallelujah. My prayer is that he turns it out of office in November the 3rd. Yes. He, he controls everything. He controls the weather. God controls the season that we're in, mm -hmm. the sun, the moon, yeah. the stars. John, one and one, I'm giving you some scriptures today. It says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was God. Yes. The word was with God. Yes. And, and, and he was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, yes. and without him, nothing was made. Yes. That was made. In him was life, and in him was the life of men. So let me encourage you with these three things that we go into the house. Remember this, number one, that trouble is a part of this sin-cursed world that we live in. Y'all get that clear in your head? While we're dealing with corona, uh, uh, COVID, whatever they are, but Jesus Christ has overcome the world. Amen. There will always be something in the world for you to have to deal with. But if you are walking in the power of God, you need to remind yourself 
that you have been granted the same exousia, the same dunamis, the same Christ, the same dominion that God has granted to Christ, so you can overcome the world too. Our biggest problem is sin. Amen. Y'all didn't see that one coming, did you? And it, 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 it has been cured by the death, the burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Your sin problem has been taken care of. Because of the cross, we can have a heart of thanksgiving in all things. When I say in everything, uh, by prayer and supplication, and your thanksgiving in our hearts, it's like, how can you go through all of that we are talking about, all of the issues of our lives, and still be thankful? Because you're not living in, as a citizen of this world. You are a kingdom-dwelling individual, and you understand. You understand that you are above it all. You are the dollar, and the world is the dollar. Yes. Yes. By the way, God's going to help us with his own hands. Yes. And he's going to help us be his feet. He's going to help us do what we are called to do. People who are in trouble, we can help them. People that are going through crisis. We can help them. Re 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 regarding the truth. And not the media type. Yeah. Yeah. The, the world is not ended. Hear me clearly. Yeah. Because of this virus. Come on now. Come on, come on now. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Would y'all stop lying about that, please? I wish, I wish preachers would stop telling folks that. Yeah. We're alive. We're kicking, we're doing what God has called us to do. I do not want to minimize the serious nature of this virus. It is serious, it is a serious condition. But here's the thing is, we know yes. firsthand yes. as uh, Exousia Lighthouse International Christian Ministries is that you get to buy it. Why? Because we got to buy it and light in our midst. We got family members that have come out of it. We got people that in this church have come down the full of COVID-19 and they're still here. Lord, I wish I had them up in here. You, if not the end, that's because you get a diagnosis. Come on, man. Don't let the media hype you. Well, they ain't it because of this virus. Hopefully we can get it under control. When we get to good leadership, Amen. It's just, it requires leadership. Amen. We will forget about it in time. Yeah. We gotta repent of our fear. Yes, yes Lord. Yes. 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 We gotta repent of our trepidation. Yes. Amen. Yes, we do. I'm going home. Come on. If you have been panicking. If you're terrified, don't let fear become your portion. Don't you know fear can kill you? Oh my God. True story. There was this man. This man was a miser. And he lived alone. And he would not spend money. And he never took a bath for fear that once he got into the water, he would die. True story. And then he got sick. And he was taken to the emergency room, but before the doctors could even get into the room, they said, he's got to get back. Ready. He's got to get into the hot tub. He's got to get scrubbed. We can't deal with this man with the fear on him. And meanwhile, uh, family members that thought he was just gone began to come around him. They discovered that he was actually a millionaire, about three or four million dollars. He had fear of taking a bath. He screamed. 
out of the core of his being as they were luring him down into the hot tub because he was convinced that he was going to die. Fear, trepidation, dread, squeezing the life out of him. And as he was emerged into the hot tub, his screaming became epic. Panic. And he died. Of a heart attack. Repent of your trepidation. Don't you know that you're the blessed of God? what caused that guy at the Walmart to begin throwing his fist and knocking over. Fear is what's causing these Karens to come up to your face and cuss you out. Because their fear of the world as is unfolding as it should. But for 400 years you've been up here and God begins to shift power so that you are now equal and not above. You get afraid. Come on, come on. The world is tanning and browning. It's not white as it was. And they're scared. Alarmism. Dread. Concern. They torment our souls and we feel that God is not in charge. And then you, out of your spirit, remind them, I love you. I forgive you. That's a stretch. But you can do this. You can walk in the spirit of God. You don't have to return evil for evil. You don't. You don't have to respond to demons because, again, that's a dollar responding to a dollar. You are above only. And you're not beneath no man. Amen. Get over your dream. Repent of your distress. Dread, disease, and distress, and even death. It may come to our house. Yes. Repent and remember that God, God's promises. I said this a couple of weeks ago. Are yes. And, and 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 we need to run to our master. Jesus is in control. I said all of these things prior to this moment to say that. Jesus is in control. He ain't going nowhere. He's still on the throne. Uh, I remember as a child here in this little chorus, and perhaps you remember too. Every promise in the book is mine. Every chapter, every verse, every line. All the blessings of the Lord divine. Every promise in the book is mine. That's it. That's all, folks. Amen. The promises of God are yours. You want to regain your control? Rest in that thought. Amen. Let your conduct be without covetousness. 
Be content with such things that you have. For he himself has said, watch this, I will never leave you or forsake you.
We love you, God, and we bless you with our whole heart. We thank you for the abundance that you've given it to us. In the midst of mayhem, you created God. Be with us as we continue to do your will in our lives. And now, may the grace of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest with you. Abide with you. Now, it's forth and forever. And the people of God say amen. Amen. amen.